Happy Juneteenth, everybody. That's black anyway. <laughs> everybody, it's black anyway. All right. All right. For real, for real. It is June the 19th. So 15 days ago, we were at the end of the LL season. We are opening up the PLL. And it it got crazy. It got crazy the last few weeks. It continues to get crazy. And now the PLL is going to go on a bit of a little break for the World Lacrosse Championships. We'll be talking about the World Lacrosse Championships, you know, uh, for the next couple of videos or so. So the next couple of videos we'll be talking about the World Lacrosse Championships uh, and how that's going to impact things uh, more on some other things, you know, that have been developing and stuff like that later on. But to start us off, we are going to talk about the PLL after what happened in Columbus. Let me move myself up a little bit here. So after, you know, after Albany, after um, after going to Charlotte, PLL went to Columbus, went to Ohio State's stadium, had some good times there. And you see the scores from the past two weeks of so week two, Archer's beat up on Chrome, Red Wolves somehow beat the Dogs, Atlas beat the Whip Snakes, and the Chrome barely got one out against the Cannons. And then week three was just insane. I mean, 19-18 Dogs over Atlas. That's crazy. Cannons, they won. They actually won a game. I know, crazy, right? Like, they had won a game in over a year, I think, which is crazy to think. And then, you know, Chaos, they beat the Archers in a game, which was on ESPN, by the way. Should have been on ABC, but we're not going to talk about that right now. And then the Whips, they just beat up on the Redwoods. Not a rivalry. Stop calling that a rivalry. It's not a rivalry. Don't, don't let the PLL social media say that, but it's not a rivalry. It's not. It's not one at all. Just stop it. So my observations and you look at the highlights and everything you look at everything you look at the games themselves that have been seen and you look at how things have been in the PLL after after Columbus as the PLL goes on break it's a log jam we got a lot of teams that are two and one we got a lot of teams that are one and two we got you know those score differentials somehow somehow the chaos are on top and with the chaos at full strength, Josh Byrne and company, especially Josh Byrne himself, I mean, that man has been on a tear since game three of the NL Finals. That man has been on a tear at seven points in that game against the Archers. I mean, I, I did not expect that type of performance from the Archers at all. Like, like usually the Archers just, they, they, they know how to be very consistent and that was not a consistent game from them at all like they looked sloppy in that game against chaos and then um you know whips atlas i mean um, i mean less we talk about that game the better because i mean i mean you have jeff t you have chris gray you have trevor baptiste all these guys just it's been mixed results i mean you see they beat the whips crazy to think because the atlas had never beaten the whips until you know, until last week, and then you ha then you have this other collapse against the Water Dogs. I mean, Connor Kelly has been unreal, but the dogs have been very very iffy. So, you know, it just didn't make any sense. It, but then again, this is the PLL we're talking about here. A lot of things don't make sense. I mean, one thing I forgot to touch upon is Lyle Thompson not playing the PLL this year. You know, I forgot to touch upon that. Like. A couple weeks ago, and I've been continuing to forget about it um, because he's playing for Six Nations, Six Nations Chiefs, um, in either I think it's the I think it's the MSL or the WLA. I forgot which one, but he may be playing, but Lyle may be playing for a Man Cup in September. We'll be talking about the Man Cup when that time comes in September. So, you know. I, I can't believe it, but, you know, the Cannons won a game without one of the best players in all of lacrosse. So, you know, standings again, it is what it is right now. Score differential is going to be the key here. Remember, 
Score differential is one of those factors to being one of these seven teams that will make the PLL playoffs in September. Again, the playoffs start on Labor Day. Really should be the championship on Labor Day, but I'm not going to go into that tangent right now. But, you know, it is what it is. And then the World Lacrosse Games themselves, the World Lacrosse Championship, the 2023 edition after the 2018 games in Israel. We didn't have a championship in 2022. To substitute, we had the under-21, you know, lacrosse championships, and it will be U.S. It will be the U.S. and Canada yet again. The gold medal finalists from the 2018 edition out in Israel they will start us off on June the 21st, and then the gold medal game all the way on July the 1st. So it's going to be one hell of a championship. Of course, you know, there's only really three teams that matter. I say three, but then again, there's teams like Australia that have been like runners up a couple times. Those were like way back when, you know. Again, most of the PLL you know, guys are on the teams that actually matter, the USA, the Canadians, and the Haudenosaunee the Native Americans. So really, those are the only three teams that actually matter. But, you know, the other teams, you know, that represent the other 27, you know, individual countries, because there are 30 countries that will play for the World Lacrosse Championship this year, because, you know, some teams have backed out, like France backed out. I I think it was Poland that, you know, was able to come in. A substitute, but you know, you have Australia, you have England in pool A, and then you know, pool B is interesting. Japan, of course, PLL wins Japan. I didn't really care for that, but hey, you know, to grow the game, you have to do something again. These are really, again, there's only three countries that matter. If you want more than three countries to matter, you got to get more people involved. So, Japan, Uganda, Wales, France, Denmark, they're going to be in pool B. Israel, the Philippines, the Czech Republic, Sweden, and Puerto Rico are going to be in Pool C. The Germans, New Zealand, Switzerland, Poland, Jamaica in Pool D. And Pool E will have Scotland, Hong Kong. I know it's technically China, but it's Hong Kong. You know, that's what the website says. So I'm going to roll with that. It's Italy, Austria, and Mexico in Pool E. And then Pool F, the final pool, Ireland. Korea, Latvia, the Netherlands, and Peru. So how it all works is we're going to have that round robin play to start. The tiebreakers are on, you know, pool placement, you know, one through five. The goal differential, the points, and whoever gives up the fewest goals. The top two in pool A will go to the quarterfinals. The remaining three teams in pool A will have to join up with the top nine teams from the other pools the there's going to be five teams in first place four teams in second place that will qualify in the first round on june 27th for you know the actual championship the quarterfinals will be on june the 28th the city finals will be june 29th the gold and bronze medal games will be on july the 1st the other 16 teams the teams that aren't you know the top nine from pools B through F or the pool A teams, there'll be emplacement brackets that will determine what place they're going to be in. So there's going to be one bracket that will go from 15th place to 22nd place and the other from 23rd to 30th place. So again, really, it's really the goal for me, you know, watching the World Lacrosse Championships this year. Um, honestly, the goal really is just, you know, it's going to be that opening game, obviously, big time, big time thing. I've been watching some highlights of some older world lacrosse championships, you know, like, you know, some from a couple years ago, they showed highlights from the 2018 game, uh, during that Archer's Chaos game. So USA, Canada, big time beef in lacrosse and you know it's gonna come to head yet again for the field games out in san diego remember the world lacrosse championships for this year will be in san diego so you're out in san diego make sure you go i can't go to san diego it's a bit too hot in texas 
to be going anywhere right now. So, uh, yeah. Whew. So, definitely going to be watching the Sweet Finals. Definitely going to be watching the Gold Medal game. Um, a quarterfinal is on my also list. You know, I'm just watching the games that are going to be on actual television. I know there's a lot of games. There's 170 games in total. And they're all going to be on ESPN Plus, but I don't have ESPN Plus, and I don't feel like buying ESPN Plus and everything like that. But, you know, it is what it is. And so, at the end of the day, let's have some fun with this whatever country you support. Hopefully, your team gets very far. Of course, as a U.S. citizen, you know, have to have to go with the U.S. here. You know, I think the U.S. will somehow... Somehow they'll beat Canada. It, it, it'll either be the U.S. beats Canada or Canada beats the U.S. You know, maybe the hope Mashoni will get something, but for the most part, I think it will be the same two teams that start us off will end it off in the World Lacrosse Championships for this year on the men's side. So, PLL takes a break. And we'll take a back seat when we come back. It will be sometime in July. I think it'll be like July. The, no, it might. It might. No, it might be that Monday. That, that Monday before Independence Day that we come back and talk about what happened in the World Cross Championships and everything like that. Because we're gonna keep rolling with our indoor football coverage on this channel and everything like that. So, Ty. Make sure you're inside if you're in Tejas, like me. Uh, if you're not in Texas and you're in another state that's very hot, make sure you're inside. So, in any case, Big Boy Sports signing out. I'll see you all soon. Uh, I'll see you next Monday to talk after the Jacksonville Carolina game. So, take care. See you next week.